Is it okay to cut toxic family members out of your life? This is how you do it. You do it like Jesus does it, okay? What did Jesus say about his family when they didn't, when they weren't supportive, okay? Or when, uh, when they were trying to bother him while he was preaching, he said, right? These are my brothers and sisters now in Christ. So this is how you do this. You don't cut them out. What you do is you take a break from them. You step back from them and you pray for them because you don't want them to stay in their toxicity. You don't want them to stay. You want to. So God is telling you to pray for them, right? So you step away. Jesus stepped away from his family for a while. You see, because Jesus had half brothers and sisters. And when Jesus started his ministry and he was out there speaking the truth, his half brothers and sisters came to bother him when he was at the synagogue preaching, but he was focused on God. He was in a season in his life where he was focused on starting his ministry and he couldn't be disturbed by their, their stuff. Okay. And so they said, Lord, your brothers and sisters are out there. They want to talk to you. And he said, no, he was firm. Right. So what you're doing is setting boundaries. Like Jesus set boundaries. Jesus set a boundary. And he said, no, I'm in here. I'm preaching. And those of you who are here with me, you are my brothers and sisters. You are right. You are my brothers and sisters right now. Those who are coming into agreement with the truth of Christ become your brothers and sisters. But that didn't mean that Jesus didn't stop praying for his family members, okay? Because what? His mother Mary became a disciple of his, okay? She actually became a disciple of his. She was at the cross. She was at the upper room. She received the fire of the Holy Ghost. She became a disciple, and guess who else did eventually? His half-brothers and sisters. Jesus had a half-brother named James who didn't believe that his half-brother Jesus was the son of God. Can you imagine growing up with Jesus? I mean, like, Mom, why is he so perfect all the time? How come he gets all the favor? Can you imagine growing up with Jesus being your half-brother? Can you imagine how James felt? And then when Jesus started his ministry, he didn't believe. So when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you are really start being on fire for God, the first thing that will happen is there will be people close to you, family members, that will be unsupportive, They may even be aggressive towards you. They may even be nasty towards you. That is a sign. That is a very good sign. That is a sign that you are on the right path with Jesus Christ, that you are focused on Jesus. You're focused on truth, right? But what did Jesus do? He didn't cut them out of his life. He just stepped back away from them for a while. He set a boundary and he continued to pray for them. And he continued to send his helper, the Holy Spirit, to his family members. And what happened? They came to believe, came fully 100% beside him. And James actually wrote the book of James in this Bible. He used to be a toxic half-brother to Jesus. But Jesus was firm and set his boundaries. Because he was in a season. You're in a season of focusing on Jesus 100%. Focusing on lining up with other brothers and sisters in Christ. Just set boundaries with those family members, right? Just maybe just keep it, keep it very cordial. Keep it very, I love you. You know, have a great day. And then you go and do what you need to do. Don't tell them everything you're doing. Keep it calm. Keep it cordial, right? Just, you know, and you go and do what you need to do for Jesus. In the meantime, pray for them. Send the Holy Spirit to talk to them. Because he can do for them in one day that would take you years. 
So what I need you to do is say, Lord, I'm setting boundaries with my family members so I can completely focus on you. But I lift them up in prayer and I place them in the blood of Jesus. Give me the words on how to just keep them at arm's length. And, you know, he will give you the words to say, right? And then say, Holy Spirit, my helper, would you go to those family members and show them what you've shown me? Bring them into the will in the word of God. And he will do it. He will do it. Because she's going to do great biblical advice on toxic family members or someone who knows desperately needs. So we start, we stop calling them toxic, right? They're just asleep. They're either asleep or the they're uh, they have scales on their eyes. They can't see the truth. Okay. So when you're calling them toxic, you're actually prophesying that over them. So stop it. So we we cancel the word toxic off of family members right now in the name of Jesus. But they're just asleep. You see, you notice Jesus would never say that anybody was dead. He never said that anybody was dead. Because he would prophesy. No, he said, they're only sleeping. I'm going to wake them up. Your words carry power. So you say, my family members, right, are blessed of the Lord. They're awake now. They see the truth. Jesus has removed the scales, lifted the veil, start prophesying that over them and see what happens. While you're taking a step back, okay, and let the Holy Spirit do it. 